our colleague and friend, forewarned meteorologist Paul Gross, is retiring after 40 years of what he calls living his childhood dream. And we'd like to welcome Paul. Paul, wow, 40 years here at Local 4. That's a remarkable milestone. Congratulations to you. That's that's amazing. And what are some of your most memorable moments here at Local 4? Man, how much time do we have? <laughs> I mean, I can I take the whole hour? Because there are so many. But, but I mean, I met Catherine Graham. The Catherine Graham. She was, of course, the matriarch of the, you know, the Graham, you know, company that owned us and, and still owns us. And they, she came to Detroit to tour her Detroit station, and they uh, asked, you know, me to give her a, a tour of our Doppler radar. We had our own Doppler radar. So I met Catherine Graham. Wow. But in terms of the weather, I mean, the after the blizzard of '99, we had. I was out in the some of the harshest winter weather we've had in terms of a solid stretch for. I mean, for many, many years, uh, for about seven of the next ten days, and one viewer actually emailed me and said, my advice on that morning show, that particular morning, saved her life, directly saved wow, her life. Really? And that is, you don't get a greater compliment than that, you know, in a, in a TV newsroom. Uh, just, you know, all the stories, like the one that you're actually watching right there, I, reporting from Geneva, uh, I mean, that was, that was just a climate change, uh, a climate change story in a conference sure. I was there for. I mean, just wow. so many, so many memories, all the tornadoes, the ice storms, the people I've interviewed. You know, yeah. interviewing Commander Jim Lovell, who was the commander of Apollo 13. Right. Great memories, a lot of things. Well, let me let me touch on this really yeah. quickly because you always say that working here was your childhood dream. Because we mentioned it in the intro a bit, but touch on that just a little bit. Well, when I was seven years old, my uncle Eddie of blessed memory uh, asked me, "Oh, Paul, what do you want to be when you grow up?" And mm -hmm. I said, "I want to be a weatherman." Wow. And and he said, "Oh, you mean like Sonny Elliott, the weatherman at Channel 4? And I said, uh, "Yeah." And and, <laughs> and you know, how many seven-year-olds no. get to do what they dream of doing at that young childhood age for 40 years. I mean, I, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. I'm just a very lucky guy. You're amazing. Yeah. And you're talented. You, know, like you are a scientist. That's what I, I, I would say this to you, right? Yeah. You are a weather scientist. And I, you know, and I really appreciate that about you. Well, enthusiastic is what I, and, and I tell kids this all the time, is that you, know, you don't have to be the smartest guy in the class, because I wasn't. I, I am a slow learner. I had to work like twice as hard as my friends at school, but nobody was more enthusiastic. I loved learning, and that's enthusiasm. If you want something bad enough, it's, it can be yours. You just got to want it. And that's I wanted so this bad. really, really bad. And let's go back to a big moment in your career. You had a chance to fly with the Blue Angels. What that was, that was like? crazy because <laughs> I was the second choice to do that, and the reporter at the last second kind of begged out on that, and so they said, "All right, Paul, do you want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah," and, and I, yes. So I am proud to say that I have thrown up in the cockpit of United States Navy oh, F-18 Hornet, go. and oh, they put cool. you through the ringer up there, and uh, that was quite an experience. That he, the pilot, uh, Lieutenant Ryan Scholl, I still remember his name. He flew me over Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, and that oh, wow. was to fly right there. That's right there. I was looking down right there at Michigan Stadium uh, from the cockpit of a. An F-18 Hornet. It's like what an incredible memory. What an oh, amazing, memory. yeah. But you've also, you know, you mentioned, you know, influencing people's lives, saving lives. But a lot of people may not realize this, but those tornado mandatory tornado drills in Michigan schools are because of you, this man right here. How did that happen? Amazing. Well, you know, schools obviously. I mean, we all grew up doing tornado drills. At least most of us here, but I was at a meeting of the Michigan Committee for Severe Weather Awareness, and it was brought to my attention that. There was nothing in state law that actually required it. Mm -hmm. And then a few months later, at another meeting, somebody showed me a newspaper article where there was a high school in Grand Rapids where a tornado warning had been issued. I mean, the sirens going off. A tornado warning had been issued, and the alarms go off at the school, and they mistook it for a fire alarm, and they sent the kids Whoa. outside. Oh, wow. And so that was it for me. When I get mad, I get things done. And, uh, and so <laughs> I contacted that. a state legislator, and wow. we, uh, we, at that time, the law required 10 fire drills a year. We reduced it from 10 to 8 and made two tornado drills mandatory. And so uh, I testified before the State House and State Senate Education Committees, and I was with the governor when we signed the uh, gross weather bill into law. And now every public cool. school yeah, in give Michigan. Give a round of applause, everyone, because we've got a lot of people. So this deserves a round of applause. It's Not one many of the people proudest have things I've ever done. Yeah. That's, amazing. That's amazing. It really is. And, and I learned a lot about the legislative process there, too, mm. especially about the, the six uh, legislators. Cool. I won't say cool. who they are, but they voted actually against it initially. They eventually came around and they voted for it, but initially there were six that actually voted against it. So I learned a lot about politics during yeah, that whole thing, too. I bet you did. Yeah. So what's in the forecast for this next chapter of your life? Well, what a lot of people don't know is that I do consulting, meteorological consulting. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is attorneys have certain types of lawsuits that 
need the expertise of a meteorologist. So it could be a flood case where how much rain fell and what period of time and how unusual is that. Um, there are slip and falls. There are auto crashes. You know, did the weather cause it or not? You know, there's building damage from like hail and lightning. Uh, so you need a meteorologist to independently and without bias present those facts. And so I have a lot of that consultant work to do. So it combines two of my loves, weather and history. So yeah. that I love to do. And then, you know, spend more time up north. And, uh, you know, I, I love to do my Petoskey stones and things like that. And I love to destroy golf courses. So I'll tear up a couple <laughs> more golf courses. And so, yeah, superintendents at golf courses don't like me. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, believe me, I have plenty to do to fill my time. And, uh, and I'll periodically drop by here and talk your ears off because that's so. what I always do. And I uh, so. love being down here with all of you. Well, so well deserved. Oh, well, thanks. Absolutely. A wonderful career. Yeah, it's, really it's really been quite a day. Bittersweet because I have so many close friends here. You know? Yeah, it's, not, I'm yeah. sad to see you go, yeah. but you've earned your retirement. Yeah, so. but you know, it's just not seeing everybody every, like I yeah. see you every day. Yeah. I see you every day and, and not seeing people every day is what's really yeah. going to be hard. You yeah. know, it's yeah. not going to be the storms when I'm not here. It's going to be the people that I'm not yeah. seeing and that's really important. Absolutely. Well, we, you yeah. will be dearly missed. We wish you all the best. And you have my deepest admiration and respect, oh, Paul. You really well, do because you. you are just a class act and brilliant well, weather scientist. <laughs> I'm just a, a kid that grew up to do what he wanted to do when he was seven years old. So I'm the lucky one here, and uh, thanks. Uh, enthusiasm, again, can take you a very long way, and I hope kids will get that message. A wonderful so, lesson. I have some yes. congratulations Thank again. you Thank so you, much. Paul. Yeah, Thank thanks. You. Great being with you guys. Great Likewise. show. I love Likewise. your show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.